AQA, A-level physics, astrophysics, the Doppler effect. This is the specification. Let's dive in. Right, the first thing you should do is I've done a, uh, for GCSE physics, a video. It's actually for GCSE astronomy uh, and it's very good, I reckon. Uh, and there's a video of me driving past in my car so if you want to know what the Doppler effect is, have a look at this. It's the best video on YouTube by a mile. So watch that video and it explains what the Doppler effect is and why it happens for GCSE astronomy. We'll take it a little bit further now. Um, here's light from a nearby star and here's light from a distant galaxy. And can you see the difference between them? So we have these black lines, which are the absorption spectrum of this particular star. And you'll see that they are in a certain position. These black lines occur at a certain wavelength. Uh, from a distant galaxy, the black lines have a bigger wavelength. It has been shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, which is why we call it redshift. OK, so the light from distant galaxies is red shifted. The wavelength of these black lines is bigger than it would be if if this light was coming from somewhere nearby. Um, we notice red shift in uh, if you look at, let's say, the Andromeda galaxy and looking at one side of Andromeda, we see red shift. Uh, looking at the other side, we see blue shift, and this is because the galaxy is rotating. One end of the galaxy is moving away from us. The other end of the galaxy relatively is moving towards us. OK, the, there are a few galaxies, nearly all galaxies. There are billions of galaxies are moving away from us. There are a few in what we call our local group who are actually not moving away from us relatively. In fact, Andromeda is moving towards the Milky Way uh, at some point in the future. I wouldn't panic, but they are actually going to merge Andromeda and the Milky Way. When we look at Andromeda, one side of it is moving away from us. The other side is moving towards us. And we can actually calculate the rate of rotation of Andromeda, okay? Uh, binary stars, if we look at binary stars, now it depends what angle that you're looking at them. If you look at this in the plane of rotation, so if you're looking at it side on, what we notice is uh, again a red shift and then relatively uh, a blue shift. And this is because one of the stars, in fact both of the stars at any point in time are either moving towards us or moving away from us. So if we observe binary stars in the plane of their rotation, we detect a changing redshift. Uh, it mentions this in the specification, so make sure you can do the, the calculations on it. There's a few on a few past papers. Um, much has been learned about the Milky Way by measuring the redshift of 21 centimeter radio waves which are emitted by excited hydrogen. Uh, we know that the Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. We know the structure of the Milky Way because these spiral arms as the Milky Way rotates, we see red shift and blue shift as they move relative to us. So it's been very useful for determining the structure of the Milky Way. Now, the equations that we need to know uh, a little bit confusing, but bear with me. So there's a there's a galaxy, and imagine that this galaxy isn't moving relative to us. So relative to us, it's stationary, and we have uh, electromagnetic waves, for example, light coming towards us. Uh, its velocity of light, speed of light is c, frequency f, wavelength lambda. Now. Imagine that this galaxy is moving away from us. It is receding. It is moving away from us with a velocity V. That's its recession velocity. 
And because it's moving away from us, the, the waves coming from it towards us are stretched. Now, the velocity of these waves will be C, uh, and we know that has to be constant. That's a thing about the speed of, speed of light. So C is the same, but the frequency will be less and the wavelength will be bigger. So I've said the frequency F will be F minus delta F, and the wavelength will be lambda plus delta lambda. So the wavelength is bigger and the frequency is smaller. Now we define this quantity called the redshift and the redshift is little z. And the redshift z, it's the fractional change in the wavelength. So z is delta lambda over lambda. Now, one thing I find a little bit confusing is why on this specification they put the minus sign there. If anybody wants to put in the comments why the minus sign is there, I'd be happy to see it because in GCSE astronomy, it's not there and it works perfectly well. Because Z is delta lambda over lambda equals V over C. Is it something to do with the, the direction of V and C? I'm not sure. But anyway, so delta lambda is the change in wavelength. Lambda is the original wavelength before it was redshifted. So Z is delta lambda over lambda, and that equals V over C, where V is the recession velocity, C is the speed of light. Now, the frequency will change by the same fraction. Because you've got C equals F lambda, and C is constant, so if, if lambda changes by a certain fraction, then F will change by the same fraction, okay? but it will be a negative change. So if the change in, in lambda is a positive fraction, then with F it will be a negative fraction. And you'll see that they've got it the other way around here. Okay. Basically, the lambda gets bigger, F gets smaller by the same fraction. Remember, if I haven't confused you too much, what to remember. Remember the equation in that box there. Z is delta lambda over lambda. The redshift is the fractional change in the wavelength. Remember that if the galaxy is moving away from us, then Z is positive. Uh, if the galaxy is coming towards us, then Z is negative. One last point. Um, this equation will only work if V is a lot smaller than C. Uh, otherwise, we get what we call relativistic effects. You know, relativistic effects, when things move very fast, there's time dilation and stuff happens to distances and things. And you, if V is bigger, you have to take that into account, which we don't. If you go and do physics at university, then you will, okay? Uh, the equations now, uh, this is what the specification says, and this is what the formula sheet says. And I hope that kind of agrees with what I've just said. Although, as I said, I'm a bit confused about the, uh, the minus sign. I think the minus sign should go with the frequency, not the wavelength. But there you go. Here's a typical example. You might get in the exam. Make sure you can do this. A prominent line in the spectrum of hydrogen occurs at 656.28 nanometers. Uh, this line is recognized in the light from a distant galaxy, but at a wavelength of 667.55 nanometers. Explain the difference in wavelength, calculate the redshift, calculate the recession velocity of the galaxy. So pause the video and have a go yourself. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. Okay, so why is there a difference? Well, the wavelength is bigger, uh, and that's because the galaxy is moving away from us, and the wavelength is bigger due to the Doppler effect. Um, the redshift, delta lambda over lambda, just bung in the numbers, uh, get it right this time, 17.2 times 10 to the minus three, uh, and then that is equal to V over C. So V over C is that, uh, and that gives you a recession velocity of 5.15 times 10 to the six meters per second.